So ladies and gentlemen, all my friends, so from right now, we have our one-hour session. So titled by Overcoming the Torture City in Complex PCI. During our everyday practice, there are many, many challenging cases, including very, very severe tortures, coronary lesions. So today, we will have three wonderful world-class speakers. They have a lot of experience in treating such a kind of very severe torture solutions. So we have Dr. Dr. Gabo, Dr. Lasik, Dr. Lila Reis. I think I have no more words to share with all the, our friends and the audience. So let's move to, it's my great honor to invite our first speaker, Professor Robert Gabo. A, Professor Gabo is the director of the CTO and complex PCI program at the Maria Pia Hospital, GVM Care and Research, Italy. He is also the board of directors of Euro CTO Club. So Profess will present the utility of guiding extension cases in CTO PCI. Please, Professor Gabo. Good morning, I'm Roberto Garbo from uh, uh, Maria Pia Hospital, uh, Turin, Italy. And uh, I will talk to you about the utility of guide extension in uh, CTO PCI. And uh, uh, these are my potential conflict of interest. And uh, we can start with my presentation talking about guiding catheter extension. I think that they are uh, one of the best uh, uh, tool we had in the, in the past, last uh, uh, past year for a complex PCI treatment and chronic total occlusion. Uh, we know how guiding extension are important uh, uh, to improve the support of, uh, for our complex procedure. And uh, uh, we have many, many techniques that uh, they're able to help us in increasing our support, uh, um, body wire, anchoring balloon, uh, passive support from uh, Amplast left guiding cut, the but guide extension are really, really useful in many situations. We can see uh, um, in this slide uh, how it's important uh, uh, also the, the, the advancing of a guide extension to improve the support. You can see in the green, um, the green um, cylinder we have in, the, in this slide that every five millimeter of advancing of guide extension, you increase a lot your support. We have uh, uh, many techniques that help us to, to use the guide extension. The first is, is direct advancement. Uh, and the second one with the distal anchoring technique. But I think that the most uh, useful is the technique is the, the so-called inch warming technique that you can see on the video is a short of helping with the balloon. You inflate the balloon near the, the guiding extension and then you deflate the balloon after that, you can push your guide extension. And this is really useful to uh, reduce the risk of complication of damage the coronary artery and to increase uh, uh, the, the, the facility of uh, pushing our device inside the coronary artery, the distality. We have many, many guide extension on the market, uh, uh, as you know that's uh, from many company, but we have one that is really a new one that is uh, really, really interesting. Is the guide extension uh, from APT Medical, the name is Expressman, is the only one we have on the market with side holes. We have four side holes in the, in, the, in the part, in, the, in the, the shaft, the distal part of the guide extension. And this is our, uh, really interesting because with side hole, you, don't have, you reduce a lot the risk of ischemia. We know that uh, we are facing this procedure with complex patient. Uh, the risk of ischemia is uh, really important. With this device, you cannot have this kind of ischemia and you will, I will show you in one case. So gallic header extension application CTO PCI. We have integral approach and retrograde approach. And uh, we have many situations which are useful uh, in integral approach for wiring, for gear delivery, for uncrossable lesion, or also for the new facilitated ADR with stingray or recross delivery. 
in retrograde approach, also to increase the, re the retrograde support in bifurcation and for reverse cut. Let's go to the first uh, case of anti-guide approach is the case of uh, X-Men plus man utility. This is a case of RCA CTO. You can see how diffuse is the disease of this vessel. It's a small vessel with occlusion at the level of, uh, of mid distal right with uh, a good collateral from the left. This case was done three months ago. And uh, this is the, uh, the picture, the video of the how is, uh, uh, is important to have this kind of side of. You can see I flash with a syringe of uh, in the guide extend, the tip of guide extension, and you can see the side all, the four side all exit uh, from the guide extension. And on the right, you can see how was easily with the inchworming technique, the advancing of this device in the, after crossing the CTO to increase our support. And this is interesting because in this video, you can see the, the advancement of gut extension in the distality of this very uh, small right, it's very, very diffuse disease right. And uh, in the video on the right, you can see the pressure, you can see that is maintained more than 100 uh, of, of pressure. And uh, this is important. You can see that uh, uh, how uh, they works with the, with the side hole. You can see the pressure we can see on the, on the screen even if uh, with the get extension was so distal in the, in the, in the distal right, so advancing. Then uh, after that, uh, it was able to, to have a, a, an easy drug eluting stent advancing, and this is a very good final result that you can see that the right was not so small, but was really diffusely disease. Uncrossable lesion. This is another interesting case, which uh, after crossing the CTO of the right, I was not able to advance any microcatheter. Also, the tempi goal, you can see on the arrow, uh, was stopped before the occlusion. After the advance of guide extension, also in this case was an express man. You can see that uh, I was able to advance our, our gear, our microcatheter beyond the lesion and to, to cross, to change the wire, to dilate for a very good result. Another situation, really interesting, is a situation which we can use for facilitated and assisted antigate dissection and re-entry, because we know that in antigate dissection re-entry, we need to feed, to, uh, to have a subintimal hematoma and, uh, uh, we need to need to face this uh, uh, situation, and uh, with the guide extension, you can easily advance your microcatheter for for the reentry and you reduce the hematoma. You can see here the case with the, a failure anti-grade osteal dissection of the co this complex right. And then I need to on the left, I need to knuckle with filter XT. You can see the knuckling in some seconds, and after that, the advancement of guide extensions was really difficult because of the calcification of the vessel, and even with the anchoring balloon, I make a lot of effort to advance the guide extension. Then after that, I put the stingray for anti guide dissection and re-entry, this on the left, you can see that the, the stingray device is in wrong position. On the right, uh, with the red arrow, you can see that the good position of uh, the two marker of the stingray. And after that, uh, the puncture with the Onet 14 that easily was able to enter from subintima space to the true lumen is a sort of a stick and drive in this situation. And this is on the right the final result after multiple stenting, and uh, we stopped the stent before the bifurcation. In retrograde approach, we have many situations which get extension is useful. You can see here, uh, to increase the support on, for retrograde gear delivery, this is a, a situation which I had to face uh, an, a complex epicardial connection from the LAD, 
and I had to put uh, uh, very distal my gut extension and that's to complete the, the, the procedure. Another case in which the return pike LP, I was not able to cross the septal and with gut extension increasing support, this is a gut extension assisted crossing in the septal. You can see that improving the support of gut extension I was able to cross with the turnpike and to conclude the procedure in a, uh, in a retrograde fashion. This is another interesting case where we have to face bifurcation CTO and mainly ostial LED. We need to keep in mind that we have to save the side branch that in this case it is, is the circumflex is the most important side branch we have. And this case is important to know how sometimes you can make a very dangerous mistake. And this was a case of many years ago, I crossed easily with ultimate bros, I, I was able to re-enter to, to the left main and the aorta. But in this case, I, I want to be sure about the course of my retrograde wire and I put an IVUS. Look at what we can see in the IVUS. We can see a very uh, uh, dramatic situation. My retrograde wire is completely in the, in the wall of the left main until the ostium in which then it went, it is, is jumping into the aorta. So what does it mean? That if I'm going to make externalization and PCI, I will close for sure the surge. So keep in mind that in this situation, retrograde crossing can be really dangerous. You need to go for a proximal LED reverse cart that you can see here. So I changed my strategy. I, uh, I, I, I did a lot of work. To, to advance my, my gear, my balloon in the proximal LED and I make the connection that is a type one connection by IVUS. Both wire are in the same space. In this situation, putting a guide extension in the proximal LED, I was able to make the re-entry, you can see here, in a much safer way because in this situation, if you re-enter in the proximal LED, you save the circ, the bifurcation. This is really important to keep in mind. So in this case, guide extension was essential to save the procedure. This is the final result with the opening on the circ also. Another situation is when in another Austrian LED CTO, you can see here in which I was not able to do an integrated puncture for uh, entry point evaluation. I need to go retrograde and uh, I planned the reverse cart, but I was not able to make the connection in this situation, the proximal LED, because uh, I was not able to re-enter from retrograde wire in the guide extension. And I was show me that uh, I was not able because my integrated wire so the IVUS was subintimal, my retrograde wire was intimal. In this situation, you never be able to do the connection. You need to, to change something. In this situation, uh, I need to change the position of my retrograde wire from intimal to subintimal space. So I need to knuckle with the Conquest Pro 12 wire retrograde. In this way, you can see with the IVUS on the right, uh, both wire are uh, connected in the subintima space uh, from 12 to 6 o'clock. And in this way, I can put the guide extension in the near the connection and make the re-entry with the, uh, an easy externalization and a very good uh, final result, saving also in this case, uh, the circ. So also in this case, retrograde crossing is, uh, uh, is not a good option. You need to avoid this kind of strategy. When you have guide extension assisted reverse card, this is a, a very uh, nice case of proximal uh, RCA CTO in a post cabbage patient. I went retrograde, but I dilate. I was not able to do reverse card in the proximal right because I'm not connected. You can see my retrograde wire is subintimal, my integrated wire is intimal. In this situation is so-called type three situation. And then I need to change the position on my re-entry. I went more distal with my wire. You can see here in the mid of the right, I put the guide extension in the mid of the right. I make the 
the IVUS evaluation, I am connected in the middle of the right and I can re-enter with, you can see here, not in the, in the proximal, but uh, in the mid right with the guide extension, I'm able to re-enter. So also in this situation, guide extension was essential to facilitate uh, the connection and the re-entry of my reto guide wire and the good result that you can see on the right. The last case in a ipsilateral situation, the most complex when you have a single access uh, ipsilateral retrograde approach, you can put, you can use a ping pong technique, but if you want to take a single guiding catheter, you can put five French alongside your micro catheter. And in this situation, I was able to re-entry in, uh, in the eight French guiding catheter but I'm not able to do trapping balloon because if I trap, I trap also my retrograde cat microcatheter. With the, with the get extension putting alongside the microcatheter, I'm able to, to, to put the wire inside the, the five French and I can put a trapping balloon inside the guiding catheter. I can make a, a, a trapping, I can push the microcatheter retrograde inside the, the fine French uh, guiding guide extension and I can make externalization and uh, I, I was able to finish the procedure with a single access. And this is uh, uh, the most complex application of guide extension in CTO PCI. So to conclude, guide cutter extension are really essential tool for CTO and complex corner intervention. And the side of the new side all design is really useful to reduce ischemia during this kind of procedure. And the, uh, the guide extension are indicated both in integrated and retrograde approach, increasing the success rate and reducing the complication in such complex procedure. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, thank you, Professor Gabo. It's an amazing presentation, sharing your excellent experience with the use of case extension. You know, our session is particularly supported by ABT company, which is a domestic Chinese company, but it's a very, very famous company, has wonderful reputation of innovation in modern device in China, also in Asia countries. So we have many, many different kinds of innovative devices from ABT company, for example, very, a very a unique design of micro cassette, also guide wire and a balloon. So here, Professor Gabo, for the first time, she uh, shared your experience of using cassette extension, extension for very challenging case. Here, I'd like to invite a, our remaining two professors to join our discussion together. Before that, I have two questions. Go for Professor Gabo, the first is that for retro, retrograde approach, so compared to the to the micro cancer or any others, so what's the risk of inducing perforation if you use a cancer extension? Yeah, I think that uh, we have many applications. I think that uh, the use of guide extension in retrograde approach change completely the game in our procedure and uh, make uh, uh, faster and easier our re-entry, essentially. Because at the beginning of our, when we start doing retrograde, uh, I remember in 2008, 2007, 2008, so the beginning, um, it now is uh, 14 years ago, and uh, uh, we had a very long procedure because uh, uh, once we get uh, the connection in the um, in the distal part of the artery, we need to 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 go on up to the ostium in order to re-enter in the in the guiding catheter, and that was a, a big problem in uh, many cases because sometimes when you are using IVUS, we understand that. Uh, we have the connection between both wires in uh, probably may, 
for instance, in the distal part of the, of the artery, but we are not connected in the proximal part. So in that situation in the past, we need to do very long procedure. With the gut extension, we know that. And uh, uh, if we have an, a, a connection in the mid of the right or in the distal part of the right, we put the gut extension and we facilitate our re-entry and our reverse car. This is a, one great application. And also, we understand that we can, we can put guide extension in the subintimal space uh, for ADR, for instance, uh, to reduce the hematoma without any risk of perforation. This is a very important point because uh, uh, people that are not uh, used to, to have a guide extension in the, in the cat lab, they, they may think about the risk of perforation if you put your guide extension in subintima space, but we know that uh, this is, uh, is not uh, a problem. With the modern uh, guide extension, with the very good profile, they are smooth, that the, the structure is flexible, and so uh, we, we don't have this, uh, this kind of problem. So this is important to know. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. My next question is that, uh, beyond the advantage of case use tension, to maintain uh, the blood flow and to monitor the change of blood pressure. So what's the uh, other advantages of cancer extension over guidezilla or any other kinds of support device for very, very tough and crossable lesions? Yeah, this is a very good question, Professor Chen, because I think that uh, uh, I don't have a, a great experience with Saido. It was the first time I used the the, the express man got extension with side door because we didn't have at the moment in Europe a similar uh, device and uh, uh, we know that uh, we are facing uh, we are dealing with everyday complex more complex patient uh, with complex anatomy sometimes uh, with the left ventricular function that is compromised and so the problem of ischemia is really important in complex procedure and uh, the use of uh, gut extension with side door uh, avoiding the problem of ischemia, preserving the flow in the artery can be really, really useful in this situation. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we, we will uh, uh, increase the use of uh, this kind of device in uh, uh, not only in CTO but in complex calcified lesion in which the, the risk of ischemia is important and uh, uh, the get extension for sure can increase this problem but the side all can preserve and can uh, we can obtain a very good uh, result we can have a good uh, procedure that uh, we can stay with gut extension uh, more time in the artery without ischemia oh, thank you any other questions from my friends perhaps i would add to one uh, possible advantage uh, also of the side holes, potential advantage, that uh, perhaps the risk of dissection during contrast injection may be, may be lower yeah, with this kind of catheter. Yeah. This is why we, we use very often side holes guiding catheters to also to avoid dumping, uh, pressure dumping and, uh, and the dissection. And yeah, this so is one a, thing... Yeah, this is a good point. Also another point is important when we are doing complex retrograde uh, with the guide extension deeply engaged in the artery, we have no pressure and the risk of thrombosis in the guide extension. And even if we have uh, the ACT is more than 300. So if you have a device in which your artery uh, have a good pressure, you reduce also the risk of thrombosis in your, your, your guiding mm -hmm. cut. Yeah, and also I have... Also, I think this, this device will be very useful for use change convention wire, workhouse wire with the rotation astrectomy wire for very severely classified lead. Uh, I'm sorry, because we slightly behind the schedule, so we have to move to the next speak. It's my great honor to invite Professor Maciej Lesiak, my great friend from Poland, uh, to present when a uh, tough lesion meets a uh, tough cardiac loss. Professor Lysiak is the head and chair of the first department of cardiology at the University of Medical Science in Poznan, Poland. Please, Maciej. Hello, everyone. In my talk, I wanted to share my experience in dealing with a complex lesion subset. 
Uh, I have nothing uh, to uh, report in regard of my conflict of interest. Uh, so we all know what are the challenges of temporary coronary interventions. We deal with more and more uh, old patients uh, uh, who have a lot of comorbidities. Uh, we have more and more complex anatomy uh, to, to, to treat. And also we have more and more patients with uh, left ventricle dysfunction. Uh, and actually, uh, this data from England and Wales show uh, how the number of elderly patients, patients with renal failure increase over the years, so from 2007 to 2014, which translates into the need of using more aggressive PCI techniques like, like for example, rotational hysterectomy. So you can appreciate here that in 2007, the percentage of complex uh, uh, PCI was only 28, whereas in 2014, uh, the percentage of, uh, of complex PCI was above 36%. So I think that currently it may be even close to 50% of all our cases we do in, in our cat labs. We also know that there is a strong association between increased lesion complexity and MACE in PCI patients. So perhaps we need some additional techniques, we need some additional tools, or perhaps we need some more experience. And this is a picture showing how important is the experience of the operator. So again, these are data from England and Wales. Uh, and you can appreciate that with the growing number of PCI procedures, complex PCI procedures per operator, uh, you can observe a decreasing 12-month mortality following complex PCI procedures. So definitely the experience of the operator is a crucial thing here. So who is an experienced, or I call it tough operator? So I think that's the high volume interventionalist with knowledge of special PCI techniques and what is very important, the ability to use a special equipment. Uh, what is special equipment? We all know the specialty wires and balloons, the micro catheters, the guide extension catheters, coronary atherectomy or lithotripsy devices, uh, some special complex bifurcation and CTO techniques, as well as a mechanical circula circulatory support. Uh, one of the very simple and in the same time very useful tool is the guide extension catheter. Uh, it is a tool providing additional backup support and improve the access to complex lesion. And, and especially in the cases of inadequate, inadequate, inadequate backup support of the guiding catheter uh, in a difficult coronary access, in the angulated vessels uh, or calcified lesions. Uh, there are also multiple other applications of this device, like, for example, retrograde wire pickup in the CTO interventions, the maintenance of cybranch wire during main vessel rotation or atherectomy. This uh, catheter can also enable OCT imaging of the aorta osteal lesions and also allows for super selective contrast injections. Then we have a better image with less contrast during the procedure. And also uh, you can perform aspiration thr thrombectomy using a guide extension catheter. So it is very useful tool and to use it, you should know how to use it. So there are a couple of um, tricks, uh, tips and tricks, how to use uh, uh, this guide extension catheter like balloon assisted tracking, balloon anchoring, an inchworm technique or stand and shifting technique, which you do once you get the, your stent, want to get your stent to, to, to the target lesion. So this is balloon assisted tracking, or I call it a balloon surfing technique. So you put uh, your balloon, a small balloon uh, that protrudes a few millimeters uh, uh, outside of the uh, guide extension, you inflate the, the balloon uh, and with the inflated balloon, you track both guide extension and the balloon together inside the vessel lumen or sometimes inside uh, of a stand lumen. Uh, a balloon anchoring, uh, so you uh, inflate a balloon uh, distally in the distal part of the vessel. And once you inflate it, you use it as an anchor to facilitate distal delivery, delivery of a guide extension catheter. Uh, then uh, you have a very useful and very safe uh, technique to 
to make some progress with your uh, guide extension, which is called inchworm technique. So you deflate a balloon just in front of the tip of the guide extension and you push uh, the, 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 the catheter uh, over the deflated balloon. So step by step with this soft, with, with this delicate technique, you can deliver uh, your guide extension really, really very, very deeply, very distally uh, into, into the vessel. And finally, uh, once you cross the lesion, uh, you can very easily position your stand distally to the, to the target uh, uh, position. And by retracting or and sheathing uh, the stand, you can uh, very safely uh, uh, deploy the stand in the, in the desired position. So now let me show a case uh, example of a 93 years old lady uh, with severe angina class three, very active uh, with preserved cognitive function, uh, with hypertension and chronic kidney disease, but with good uh, left ventricle function of ejection fraction 65. Uh, so this is the baseline angiography uh, performed in a local hospital when a lady was admitted. Uh, and you can appreciate a severe calcified lesion in a very tortuous uh, LAD and the left circumflex artery with uh, uh, minor disease, just minor disease in her right coronary artery. So these are two carpid lesions. Uh, and uh, uh, the operator uh, in this local hospital attempted to, to, to fix it, but uh, he failed. And, uh, you see that uh, he was not able to deliver the uh, even small balloon uh, over the body wires. So he used a body wire technique and it was uh, unsuccessful. He was unsuccessful. So the patient was uh, referred to my hospital. And a few days later, uh, um, we did the procedure. I wanted to start with the imaging, but again, I was not able to deliver uh, this time IBUS catheter to the lesion. So I can only show you the proximal part of the left circumflex artery where you can appreciate almost circumferential uh, calcified ring in this vessel. Uh, of course, many of us know that if you are not able to get the IBUS into the lesion, that means that you should uh, refer to rotation at the rectum. So I decided to, to use uh, rotablation. So you see, uh, with the help of microcatheter, I put the rota uh, extra support wire to the distal of the circ, uh, and I used uh, 125 burr with 160 rate per minute. So you see that the, the burr moved rather smoothly. Uh, uh, but even after rotation at the rectomy, I was still unable to deliver to 2.5 non-compliant balloons. So you see, I, I got stuck with the balloon uh, in front of the lesion, uh, even, I used, uh, even though I used the body wire technique. Uh, but fortunately, I managed to deliver the uh, uh, semi-compliant 2.5 balloon, and then I could use it as an anchor. So you see, uh, I inflated uh, 2.5 millimeter balloon in the distal part of the circ, and using an anchor technique, I introduced the Expressman uh, guide extension catheter. Then to move it forward, uh, I use a more safe uh, the inchworm technique. So you see the balloon was deflated in front of the tip of the guide, uh, guide extension and over deflating balloon, I managed to move the, the, the tip of the guide extension distally to the, to the lesion. So I used the Expressman guide extension because it's very, uh, uh, very soft uh, uh, and atraumatic tip catheter, very flexible, uh, covered with uh, hydrophilic coat, which, have, uh, which has two unique features. One of these is the very long um, exchange segment just to keep the end transport out of the aortic arch or out of the subclavian artery if you use uh, radial approach. And the second, uh, second very interesting feature is uh, uh, a double twin side holes uh, located at the, close to the tip of the, uh, of the, uh, of the catheter, uh, just to provide some anti-grade blood flow in a coronary artery uh, during a PCR procedure. Uh, so uh, having this uh, Expressman guiding uh, guide extension distally to the lesion, you see how easy it was to introduce the stent 2.5 of a 28 millimeter dry gluting stent, uh, easy delivery, uh, uh, and 
Now you see the stem implantation and post dilatation with uh, 3-0-NC balloon and the final result as for the CERC. Uh, then uh, the same steps were performed as for the LED. So again, rota wire of a micro catheter, 125 burr uh, with 160 rates per minute. Uh, it was quite easy with this uh, rota extra support wire. Uh, uh, then, uh, with the help of the Expressman guide extension, I managed to deploy three all uh, 28 millimeter long uh, drug looting stands, uh, stand, and this is uh, the final result, uh, both for the left circumflex coronary artery and for the LAD. So the rest of the hospital stay of this patient was quite uneventful, and the patient was uh, discharged home uh, the next day after the procedure. Uh, so I think that I clearly show you that uh, what are the, the challenges of, uh, of modern um, contemporary uh, coronary interventions. So the number, we all know that the number of patients with complex coronary lesion is growing uh, and the routine PCI approach may be ineffective uh, and even harm harmful. So the use of modern techniques and gear allows obtaining the optimal PCI result and the Expressman guide extension catheter is a very simple and very effective tool to assist with complex PCI procedures. I thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you, Maciej, for your excellent uh, presentation about the use uh, of cancer use attention for very torturous calcified case. I have two questions. The first one is that when uh, my Chinese colleague published that minimal Annually, 15 left man can left man standing is a basic requirement for any intervention cardiologist to treat left man disease. So, what's the requirement in Poland for left man standing? Yeah, in Poland, uh, to to become the independent interventional cardiologist, you need a uh, two years training, and with two years training, one one year is to be uh, just a diagnostics, and then the second one is to be a fully interventionalist. Of course, excluding some special skills like CTO or or or, or structural heart procedures, and then if you fulfill this two year training, you got the certificate of the Polish Cardiac Society, and then you are allowed allowed to perform also left main cases. So this is not, uh, we do not have any special regulation regarding left main procedures. Oh, thank you. In terms of the very severely torturous lesion, so even sometimes you need to use body wire, balloon anchoring technique is still uh, possible to cross the wire distally. So do you have any any experience com comparing different different uh, techniques to get wire distally? Yeah, the first thing you, you should start with the good uh, support with good backup of your guiding catheter. My default strategy now is to use seven French radial uh, guiding with the with the uh, special glide uh, slender shift. So so I use in most of cases even for CTO uh, two seven French but uh, with good support like extra backup or something like that uh, uh, or amplas left for right corner artery then of course uh, you need to use a good support wire uh, in most of cases there are uh, not hydrophilic wires but with a very strong core uh, with good support uh, sometimes you have to use multiple wires um, two or three uh, and then of course you have some additional tools uh, like guide extension uh, extension is a great tool because it's very easy to use the learning curve is is, is, is really very short so so, so you just after using two or three times you know how to how to do this it's uh, relatively safe if you know how to uh, advance uh, the inchworm technique can be really recommended because it's really safe uh, and, and allows you to go very deeply in, in, into the vessel uh, and then of course some additional techniques like anchoring your guide if you need uh, in some special very safe place that, that, that that's what i would recommend also very nicely um, presented by by roberto Oh, thank you. Any comments or questions from Professor Gabo and Dr. Lina Reis? Yeah, I have to say that uh, I agree with Masek that uh, 
that uh, uh, for uh, we are dealing with more complex cases uh, every day and uh, we need the, the right experience and the right tool and get extension uh, especially for instance for rotational autorectomy uh, we need uh, to treat a complex calcified lesion and uh, I like a lot uh, uh, I published a paper, the first case of a, a dual double Y rotational atherectomy with gut extension to protect the side branch. It was a, a very interesting case in which uh, was essential uh, the gut extension to protect uh, the, the the other wire and going to to rotate the the, the side branch of the LED, for instance, or uh, when you need to. To increase your support, or you need to cross a stand that you 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 place some day before, you put the gut extension to protect the the stand from the burr. Or when you have a, the problem of entrapment, for instance, is very important. I always solve this problem with, with cutting the the system, the rotor system, and putting the gut extension up to the burr that is is entrapping the artery and. Then you can pull everything together, and you always solve the problem of entrapment. So I think that uh, uh, these tools are really essential. We need to, to, and the young operator we need. We have also in Italy young interventional cardiologists that every year they perform many cases. And I think that uh, in the future, the more and more uh, colleagues will be able to do complex cases with the right tool and experience. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so we have moved to the next speak, Dr. Dr. Jose uh, Lina Reis. Uh, Dr. Lina Reis is the invention cardiologist from Lozona Bersa University Hospital, Spain. Uh, Dr. Lina Reis will present the clinical study of a new suffrage tip non-compliant balloon. Please, Jose. Good morning. My name is Dr. Jose Linares from the Lozano Blesa University Hospital at Zaragoza, Spain. I would like to thank Europe PCR organization to this symposium to talk about the results of a new spheric tip non-compliant balloon for stem post dilation in coronary tortuosity. These are my disclosures. As all of you know, Optimal stem expansion and apposition are key to improve outcomes. Non-compliant balloon post dilation or NC balloon post dilation is related to a better stem expansion, less complications, and lower target lesion failure at follow up. However, due to their different uh, construction, non-compliant balloons have inferior crossability that can be an issue in calcified anatomy, proximal stem edge malaposition, or tortuosity, as seen in this angiography. Regular non-compliant balloons have a conic tip that can clash against the stem, conditioning an opposing force vector that blocks balloon advance. In these cases, Pushing stronger to advance the balloon can cause a stem mechanical complication and a big travel ahead. The Conqueror NC balloon has an innovative design based in a spheric tip with a particular visualization at fluoroscopy. Despite an increase an increasing crossing profile, the spheric tip conditions a decomposition and a reduction of the resistance vector, facilitating the balloon entry into the stem. We aim to evaluate this theoretical assumption in real practice through the Reconquista Registry, a Spanish prospective registry, to evaluate the effectiveness of the Conqueror NCS spheric tip balloon for stem post dilation in daily practice PCI. The registry was developed by the Investigational APIC Foundation across 20 centers of the whole national territory. The hypothesis was that concurrency spheric tip could have a high success rate over 80% 
as first choice and could increase the success rate over 30% in regular NC volume failure. The primary endpoint was technical success, defined as advancing the concurrency to the in-stand segment to be post-delayed. There were two arms, as first choice or after regular NC volume failure. Complex techniques were only permitted in this arm if they had been used with the regular NC volume. Secondary endpoints were angiographic success, defined as technical success and no significant residual stenosis and normal coronary flow, and procedural success, defined as angiographic success and absence of stem mechanical complication or maze during PCI. These are the preliminary results of the first 200 patients and 216 lesions. Basal data is similar to any regular practice PCI registry. Over 70% of lesions were complex. A guide extension catheter was used in 7% of lesions. And Conqueror was used due to regular NC balloon failure in 70% of lesions. Respect to total number of lesions, the technical success was 98%, and angiographic success or procedural success were the same, 96% have no uh, stent mechanical complication or maze were reported by the investigators. I previously said of utmost importance are the results in cases of regular NC balloon failure. Sizes of conqueror balloon were similar, and conqueror reach a technical success of 97%. The conqueror just failed in one lesion. Obviously, the results exceed the 30% expected in the hypothesis. And what happened with tortuosity? Well, 40% 40 40 of lesions, a total of 86 lesions, presented moderate or severe in these lesions, a guide extension catheter was more frequently needed, and the technical success was 96%. In 21 lesions, there was regular NC volume failure, and the conqueror had technical success in all of them. Let me show you some cases that could make us understand these outstanding results. Let's start with the angio used at the beginning of my presentation. A stent was deployed at the distal lesion. And as you can see, a regular NC balloon clashed against the stent due to proximal ectasia and ulceration. We didn't want to use an extension catheter. So we used a conqueror that easily advanced into the stent. Right postulation and good final result. Here is another case with great tortuosity as sir. A stent is deployed at bifurcation and a regular NC balloon to the pot didn't advance and the conqueror easily advanced into the stent, as you can see here. Nice pot and final result. This is a complex case of the last week, a critical stenosis at right coronary angulated ostia and suboptimal support as couldn't use an amplatz. As usual in this location, after stent implantation, our tostial postulation was considered. Our tostial stent segment was curved and regular NC balloon clashed against the stent edge and moved the catheter backwards. To prevent a proximal mechanical complication, I use the conqueror, which is very tip accommodated to the curve and got into the stem, as you can see, at the stem boost. Making possible the auto osteal post dilation with a good final result. 
I will finish with this STEMI case in a great tortuous right coronary artery with very high thrombus volume. After a hard PCI, we needed a guide extension catheter to implant a very long four millimeter stent and got timey three flow. I was as shown a five millimeters versus size and mala position was guaranteed. Population was mandatory, but residual thrombus was present. So we planned new PCI in few days. In the second procedure, despite the body wire technique, the regular NC balloon clashed against the stem and also with some resistance, but the tip of the conqueror got into the stem and maintaining smoothly the pressure, the pushing, the whole conqueror advanced into the stem. And after postulation of the entire stem, we got an excellent final result. At the view of this result, our conclusion is that conqueror and C spheric tip balloon for instant post dilation shows a high success rate as first option, high success rate after regular NC volume failure, a high success rate in coronary tortuosity, and low complex techniques requirement. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Dr. Lina Grace, for your excellent presentation about this particularly designed balloon for post-dilation of the study. So I have one brief question for you. So in general, what's the indication of using this spheric non-compliant balloon for post-dilating stand? We have very little experience for regulation. Um, and the beginning of the study, we observed the balloon for fixed cases, or cases where there has been a regular civilian failure, uh, a high rate of success within the encounter. Uh, and now, uh, thanks to the results of the study, uh, the concurrency of FRT came out to the study's balloon for complex PCI. I feel that the population on the balloon and the listen of this cloud, there is a big complexity. Uh, instead of uh, using a regular balloon or using a conqueror, uh, first we, we use the conqueror with very good. Oh, thank you very much. I think we still have time to extend uh, our discussion. So, Machia, do you have any? Any comments about the, the modern design of non-compliant balloon for post-dilation of the stent? Yeah, I think that we still need some improvements in this technology because uh, this is a trade-off or having a device which is very stiff and resistant to the bursting, so the, the rate, uh, uh, high rated burst uh, pressure. And on the other hand side, we need a, a device which is deliverable, uh, flexible enough to uh, to negotiate the, 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 the sometimes very sharp bends and very difficult anatomy. Uh, I remember uh, one of the solutions we used to use with the special wire, which is called the wiggle wire. I don't know whether uh, some of uh, you are still using the, the wire. We don't use it anymore. That was a wire with some kinks, with some bends uh, that helped us to avoid, uh, you know, the collision between the tip of the balloon catheter and the edge, edge of the stent. Uh, I never have had an opportunity to, to use uh, this uh, uh, Conqueror balloon but I'm really, I would love to, 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 to try it. So I hope uh, he, he, this device will be available in, in Poland uh, very soon. 
Okay. Yeah. Any comment from yeah. Professor Cabo? Yeah, I agree with uh, with Magic that uh, stent optimization is really essential for the for the good result of our procedure for the follow up. So, um, many situations we need to obtain this good uh, optimal stent uh, deployment, uh, and we, we we need almost 100% of case to go to post dilated stent. And uh, in some situation we are really in trouble because we make a good procedure and then during the post dilatation we, we are going to, to make a stand deformation and uh, uh, that can um, can can uh, we can have many uh, we can be in trouble we can compromise the success of our case so what uh, what sh what uh, Jose was able to show us I think it's a, it's a great uh, uh, opportunity to to try this uh, this new device that is a unique device, unique balloon, and uh, I really uh, hope to to try soon this kind of balloon because uh, I think that can be one of the the, the big the big news we can have our, uh, for uh, our tool in uh, in complex PCI and uh, this is a, can be really interesting for that. We like to emphasize that the device got a big big concentrate. In cases where uh, previous uh, regulancy value have failed, that's a very good note. Mostly when you put the compare in the wire, you can see that it's much thicker than other balloons. The tip is thicker, but it's pretty flexible. So my main tip is that you must rely on the device, and the more you use it, the device is the right thickness, nothing improves it. Oh, thank you very much. I think uh, we are catching up time. Uh, in briefly, I don't, it, it don't have much more words to share with you. I just want to appreciate all three speakers to share your experience with our audience and ours. I think your experience are very important to how to use a case, a guiding extension case for very challenging case, tortures, calcified lesion. And finally, uh, Dr. Lina Reis uh, presented very, very important information from his uh, excellent clinical trial to share your experience of using spheric tip NC balloon for post dilation. Uh, I think we have no more time to uh, expand our discuss. Uh, thank you very much, all my friends. Stay safe. And I hope to see you in person soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Bye-bye.